All right. Jesus. Oh, who? I don't know. I do not know. That's not how I left you. Anyways, good to see you all here this evening. We're going to get started tonight with 230. Good to see you all here at Anchor Baptist Church. We're going to start with number 230, Save, Save. Let's stand and we'll sing 230. I found a friend who is old. to 230 and your hymnals 230 55 let's recheck that 255 blessed assurance 255 blessed assurance blessed assurance
seated. All right, I'm not going to take up too much time tonight. Brother Hanson's not here. I think he was not feeling well, so keep him in prayer. Um, coming up next week is the 10th. That will be street preaching at 2.30 in the Plata. Uh, we will be doing that. Um, the 2.30 at the, at the courthouse in the Plata. That's the, uh, April the 10th. Uh, we're doing it a week early this month because April the 17th is Easter Sunday, as it is known to y'all heathens. <laughs> uh, you, I'm going to leave that alone. You get through two Babylons, you're like, man, there is nothing. I, I don't celebrate anything. Um, but no, Easter Sunday is April 17th. Um, and Sister Elise will have something in the back for the children on that day. So I believe that's going to run. She's not in here. Uh, that's going to run through Sunday school and through junior church. So uh, keep that in prayer. She's going to try and get some kids in. She always tries to get kids in when she does those things. So keep that up. Um, Tim Green will be here June third, third through the fifth. Uh, I believe that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, he'll be here at seven p.m. normal uh, times then. And then on the 4th, Lord willing, I'm going to be getting ordained, so please keep that in prayer. And there's something else on the 4th. It was on the schedule. Dad, you have the schedule in the back there, don't you? What's on the 4th? June 4th. A, the fam that's the family, the Amazing Race Family uh, Olympics Day that Elise is setting up. So she's got a, a children's event she's setting up on June the 4th. So keep that in prayer. If nothing else, pray for it. Uh, but I'm sure she's going to need help with that. Um, other than that, there's something really pressing coming up in the immediate future. Anybody have anything before we get going? No? All right. Uh, Chucky, you open the meeting in prayer, and then we'll sing another song and get past her in the pulpit. All right, let's stand again, and we'll sing uh, 308. There was one I was looking for, but I can't find it, so we're going to sing 308. Higher Ground. Let's stand, we'll sing 308, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. 308, Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abound my prayer my aim is higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land a higher plane than i have found lord plant my ground. Hold up a second. That second verse is really good, and if y'all are stuck in anything that's going on in the news at all in the last, like, five years, give or take, it says, my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. If you've got invested down here, it's time to move on. Though some may dwell where these abound, there's a lot of people that live in that, and you can live in that, and it's easy to live in that because it goes into your living room 24 hours a day. But my prayer and my aim is higher ground. Let's sing that second verse again. That's a good verse. 
Sing it like you mean it. Verse 2. My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand By faith on heaven's table land A higher plane than I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground I want to live above the world Though Satan's darts at me are hurled For faith has caught the joyful sound the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. You all can be seated. I do have the smoots come. I forgot where I was. Oh, yeah. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. And right now, I know you're able. And my God, come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Because you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. I know, I know, you never Everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now, breaking my heart of stone, taking over like it's Jericho. My walls are all crashing down, but right now I know you're able. In my Come through again. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. I know, I know, you never battle. I know, I know, you never win. 
don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now. Don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now. Don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now. Psalms 100. In light of what the Lord's done for us, if you're saved tonight, you are uh, been really blessed. Um, and sometimes when you make an effort to do something, um, never, I've never. <laughs> You, you think sometimes somebody, somebody says something, well, they're trying to get you to pat them on the back. I've been with that lady a lot of years, almost a half a century, and um, she knows I never, never think I've got anything to say. But as long as I have a book in front of me, it has something to say. And I, I try to get some things out of there that um, mean a lot to me, and hopefully it means a lot to you. You ever stop to think what God expects you to bring to church? And uh, I asked Serena the question while we were on vacation. I said, honey, what do you think that we ought to bring to church? She said, the Bible book, the hymnal book, and the pocketbook. <laughs> so I take no more advice from her. Um, um, one of the things that I've done a long, long time ago, years ago, I used to uh, acknowledge the people and sign their offering for the end of the year. I don't do that anymore because I don't know what the story is, why some people do what they do and don't do what they don't do, and I don't want that to influence me one way or the other. And that's the reason I don't do it. Um, and uh, I think the Bible says you to give with a cheerful heart if you want to give. Now, Steve's not here tonight, so... He's going to say, see, you talk about giving when, I, um, when, I, when I'm not there. The um, Lord's always been good to take care of us, and he does. He always has, and he always will, okay? So um, if you'll go to Psalms 100 tonight, Psalms 100. I think what I'm going to do is I have a lot of my commentaries at home, and I think I ought to have a set here, too, so I'm going to probably start building up another set. But I was trying to look up some things on Psalms 100. <clears throat> and um, in there, it, it tells us some things that we ought to be doing. There are things that I think the Lord expects of us. And I think uh, praise is one of them. The um, Bible says make a joyful noise. Amen? Amen. Now, when you make a joyful noise, how would you define the word noise? Come on, Ben. You, he's looking at me with that squinty little. Now, what does that mean to make a noise? Yeah, I know what a mom says. I've watched Naomi. Quit all that noise. <laughs> I, I, I respect a mama. Honestly, for God, I respect mamas anyway, but I respect a mama that tells a child what, she's, what the deal is and makes them understand you're going to walk the line. <laughs> Amen. Train up a child in the way it should go, and when it's old, not to part from it. Keep them in church. Put them in church. When they re need rec uh, rebuking, rebuke them. When they need praise, and praise them. 
Amen. Let them see. <laughs> Look at Psalms 100, if you would. 100 verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto who? All right. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with? Know ye not that the Lord he is? It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Oh, boy. You're getting it, aren't you? You know what I'm trying to tell you when you come to church? Leave everything else back out there. You could, it's be there when you get out there. Go ahead and leave it there. You say, well, I don't know. Just leave it there. You know what I mean? Just out the door. Don't bring it in here. You say, I got troubles. Everybody has troubles. Amen? I don't mean to make light of it. With thanksgiving into his courts, it's not a bad thing to praise the Lord. Amen? Be thankful unto him. Now watch. And he said, and bless his name. You ever just bless the name of Jesus? Amen. <laughs> Man, where would I be without him? Where would you be without him? If God didn't bless you with talents, what? you'd just be sitting there like a bump on a log. But the blessing is, is taking the talent you have and giving it back to him that's worthy. He gave it to you. Make a joyful noise. Some people, Buddy Cargill used to sing. I said, Buddy, I think you took the word joy, joyful to the great extreme. Well, I better. For the Lord is Anybody got a testimony about how good he is? The Lord is what? She got you down. <laughs> Thank you, sis. I appreciate it. She asked somebody today, are you saved? <laughs> I believe she knows what saved is, too. <laughs> My goodness. Out of the mouth of babes, brethren. <laughs> For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth to all generations. Isn't that blessing? Ben, pray for us, sir. Amen. Thank you, brother. Now, I look at this thing, and I, I want to preach to you just a very short period of time um, on what everyone should bring to church. Obviously, you should bring a good spirit. It's hard to preach when you bring a bad spirit. Uh, there's some things you ought to bring. Um, you ought to bring some things that causes trash to be all over the sanctuary and mark up the floors because it gives Sarah something to do. I told you, I told you, Stephen, I was going to say that to your mom. <laughs> People bring all kinds of things to the Lord uh, bring in church when they come. And you know what? I understand. I, everybody has good days, bad days. Things aren't going right. Uh, I was telling uh, Stephen, they're probably, Shirley and Chuck are probably going to keep him out of my office because I'm probably putting bad things in him. And... Uh, <laughs> I said, every once in a while, you just have one of them days. You know what I mean? Nothing seems to go right. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're saved, everything's all right. It might not go right, but everything is all right. Because what? Uh, worst case scenario, I die and I stand right there before him, and uh, I'll, I'll be just like him. Amen. I'll have what he has. I have a brand new home, and I have all the blessings of God right there. My sins are forgiven. My battles are over. You say, well, what about the people behind? Well, <laughs> deal with it, I guess. Because I'm saved, I'm glowing to glory, and what a blessing all that is. But well, there's all kinds of things that you can bring to church. And as I said, I was thinking about this thought up there, and it's just really a thought 
that I had when I was up, in, up there, and I asked her, and she literally did say that. You know, there's three things you can bring to church. And that's not really what the Lord's worried. First of all, I want you to understand, I'm not worried about your money. Steve is. He has to pay the bills. If you've got the bill we just got, we got an air conditioning unit for this sanctuary order, $13,000. Thank God we have, hopefully, the money. I think the money's in the, the bank to pay for it. Uh, but it's a big chunk, isn't it? So what do you do? You cry, you moan, or you just say, thank you, Lord, thank you that... Hey, listen, it could be opposite. It could be negative. Man, where are we going to get 13 grand? You understand? But there's 13 grand there to pay it, so you say, Lord, you knew better. Thank you. And uh, you'll appreciate it come this summer when it gets hot because we've been in here when it's hot and the air condition's off and not working. I'm glad for that. But there's all kinds of things you can, you can bring. Some uh, bring candy and, and snacks and especially loud toys. Now, that's a blessing. We normally keep it in back unless my son's here and he wants to shake something up or move something around, but uh, uh, we don't let him get away with it. You say, well, he's autistic. Well, he's an autistic kid. Amen? He needs to learn to do right, just like anyone else. But uh, watching the kids back in the auditorium, you say, why? Because they get more activity most, most of the time than the grown-ups do. I can go back there and say something, they smile. I can come in here and say something, everybody looks at me like, is that all you got? <laughs> and it's just, it's okay. It's okay. Because listen, I, I know something, but there are some things, when you get ready to come to church, Buddy Cargill, remember, what's his name, Mandy, Manny? Manny, he used to tell Manny, he said, now look, Manny, this is on a Saturday night. You know what he'd do? Buddy go in there and he'd brush his teeth. He said, Manny, you know why I'm brushing my teeth? And the kid looked at him and says, why, your breath stink? <laughs> He said, no, I'm brushing my teeth because I'm getting ready for church tomorrow. I'm going to get a shower, lay my clothes out, and be ready to go to church. And uh, a lot of people aren't like that. They don't come prepared to go to church. Amen. They don't come prepared. Well, I'm never going to hear that preacher again. Well, I've got, listen, I can sit down and, you can, and, and go to sleep, and you can be up here and yell. <laughs> I mean, it's either way. But the deal of it is, what are you bringing? You know, every once in a while, the God, God will bring you in, and maybe God's laid on the preacher's heart to take you to the woodshed. Amen? Every once in a while, Ben's been there. He's got a smile on his face. Um, but you ever been to the woodshed? You know what the woodshed is? You know what it's a type of? It's where you go to the woodshed, and, and Dad dishes out his love for you. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, right? <laughs> so Dad... Carrying out the tradition of love. I've been to the woodshed quite a few times. And anyway, people bring all kinds of things. Kids with loud toys. As I said, they get back there and start rolling things around. Uh, we have a nursery for that. We have a back room for that. But uh, I was telling Naomi today, I, I, was, it's, I, was, I'm, I am blessed to watch a mom when her child needs to be re rebuked, they'll straighten them out. I remember one time, uh, I'm trying to think, Jim, um, oh, shoot. I, I'll get it in one second, but um, he was the funny character, the guy that was always, Jim White, thank you. And Jim White's a friend of mine. I don't know why I couldn't think of his last name, but Jim White, was at a church, and he was preaching at a church, and this kid was just absolutely belligerent. I mean, his mother said, do this, and the kid would just, I'm not doing that. My dad ain't here. You can't tell me what to do. Now, I don't know about the mothers you know, but Antoinette would never say that to her mom. <laughs> That's a smart girl. Uh, but uh, Jim White went over to the Billy, would you cut those fans on low, please? Uh, Jim White went to uh, watch what that mom was going through with that young man, and he went over to that little boy, and he, he boy's about 13, maybe Joseph's size, maybe a little bit shorter, and Jim White pushed him in the corner and said, son, I have some great spiritual input to you. If you talk to your mother like I just heard again, you won't be able to walk, you won't be able to sit, 
you won't be able to do anything. You say, did he threaten that child? Yes, he did. <laughs> he sure did. Why? Because that child was being disrespectful to the woman who brought him into this world. Amen? I, I don't know about you. Uh, I'm glad that I'm around young people that wouldn't even dare to do that. Why? It's called respect. Amen? It's called, you say, well, they're just, no, they're trying to impute you impute to you something that they know from experience. They're trying to help you with something. They're trying to build a structure in you. What should I bring to church? And we'll get to this thing. Psalms 100 uh, is a future. Obviously, it's millennial. But anyway, first of all, bring the right spirit. Can I tell you that? Bring the right spirit. There's nothing to kill a church any worse than somebody come, whoa, woe is me. Uh, yeah, everywhere I turn, everywhere I go, just... I, you know, it's just so hard on me. Can I tell you a lot of people going through a lot of things? You know what? Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Sometimes it's just God getting on you. And you need to look for God. Hey, Lord, what, what, what's going on here? Why am I? Bring the right spirit. Come in there. Enter in his gates with what? Thanksgiving? You know what you need? A good shouting spirit. Every once in a while, it's just like, Getting a shower, it refreshes you. It makes you get up and you say, I don't shout. Oh, don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Your husband comes in way, way later and, where have you been at? That's a good spirit to have. Or how about when you don't have money to pay the bills? Now, who do you shout to then? <laughs> Bring a spirit in there. One of the things I enjoyed, first time I ever met Alan Rahm. This is honest truth. Uh, he just preached here a couple weeks ago. And my first time I met him, Alan Ryman shouts wherever he is. He shouts in bathrooms. I, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. I went into, uh, we were on a trip going somewhere together, and we went into the restroom to use the restroom. And Alan likes to set up stages of things. And we go in there, and we're in there, and Alan says, Hey, Bob, you know I was just outside. Did you hear what that guy said? Nobody had said anything. Nobody was even there. It wasn't some, I, I was like, who are you talking about? He said, that guy out there, you know what he said to me? He yelled out to me and says, unless you repent, you shall all likewise pair. You, it, listen, you need to trust Jesus Christ or you're going to burn in hell forever. Did you hear that? I said, no, I didn't hear him. And what was he really saying? He said, he was telling me I was going to hell because I hadn't trusted in Jesus. And he said, do you know what? What does it mean to trust into Jesus? Well, I said, I guess it means that he died for your sins. That's what I heard. And we go through almost a, a message in the gospel for five, ten minutes. We're sitting in there, and, and finally, ain't nobody ever said a word. And some of these guys are walking out like, <laughs> looking at you like you're about half nuts. Say, what is he doing? He come with the right spirit. He come with a good spirit. Uh, let me tell you something. I got something to shout about. I need, I mean to make heaven my home. That's what the song says. And listen, every once in a while, it won't hurt you to go, whoopee. I mean, it, won't, it just won't hurt you. you know why? It, because it's bringing praise and thanksgiving to the one who died for you at Calvary. It's making them know that, listen, I want to praise your name for you've been so good to me. Some of you don't deserve anything. Some of us, we deserve, as the old preacher said, to be in hell with our back broke. That was a Rex Harrison statement. But you know what you got? You got salvation. You got the Son of God who came down and died for you and took your sin. And listen, you are eternally saved by the marvelous grace of God. You need to come in with a shout, glory to God. I'm saved. I'm on my way. I'm already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come in with a shout in your mouth and say, man, I want to lift him up. I want to praise his name. I want to glorify him. Say, well, what about the other people? You, they might get on board. They might, it might get contagious. One guy will stand down there and go, glory to God, and the other go, whoopee. But you are, I know this psalms is millennial, brother, but I, I'm trying to drive a point home. Uh, we've been in meetings, and I've talked to you about Don Kreider's mother. He used to go down there, and the things would, but this one guy would, he wouldn't say much. But surely he'd get over, he'd be sitting there. And I mean, people are shouting, people are running. One lady kicked off her shoes. 
I'm talking about in Tennessee now. I understand we're refined up here. But I'm talking about in Tennessee, what they'll do is they'll kick their shoes off and she just get to walking down that like, Woo! Glory to God! I just felt God move in this place. And this one guy standing over here, and the guy says, Well, whoopee! <laughs> That's all he said. He just said, Well, whoopee! You know what I'm trying to tell you when you come in here? Leave all your troubles out there. Leave the world where it is. You're not going to do nothing about Biden. You're not going to do nothing about the Senate. You're not going to do anything about coronavirus. Bless your heart. What you can do is come in here. I'm out of this world for a little bit. I'm in here doing something for God. I want to glorify him. I want to shout about him. I want to tell the world about him. That's my man. No. You need to come in with the right spirit. It's a shouting spirit. That Bible tells you in Psalms 105, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Some people, it's like extracting teeth. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't know where the joy is there. <laughs> I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Well, it must have sunk to your feet because it hadn't come up in a while. Get the joy of God in you, man. Well, I don't like that kind of preaching. I bet the Lord enjoys it. it you know what he, <laughs> make a joyful noise, did he not say, unto the Lord. Amen? Now, are you saved tonight? Do you deserve it? Did someone go and die on the cross for you? Did somebody gave you a Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, to direct you, to help you through troubles and trials? Did they give you a Bible that you can hang on to and look up and it says, boy, I know, I know, I know, read the back of the book and we won. Uh, I know the battles are coming, but one of these days we're going to get out of here. One of these days he's going to come with a shout, with a voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise for us. Then we which are alive and remain shall, until the coming of the Lord shall not prevail them which are asleep. The Bible says in verse 18 of that chapter, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Bless your heart, honey. Lift him up. Come with a good spirit, a shouting spirit. Come with a serving spirit. Lord, what can I do for you? Hello. Well, now you done moved on around into that, have you? You know, it's nothing any better than to serve him. I don't care if you clean a, clean a bathroom. Serve him. We have a cleanup day here. And we do pretty good most of the time with people showing up for cleanup day. But you know what? It, you're not doing it for anchor. You're doing it for him. It's a blessing to do something for him. Why? Because he's done so much for you. I done ran out of notes, Ben. I don't have any notes. Psalms 140 and verse 1 to 3 tells us what the Lord did for us when he saved us. It tells us that he put a new song, amen, in my mouth. A rock of ages cleft me, uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm fine. Hey, listen, put a new song. He got some of that old junk out of your mouth. Uh, somebody goes, <laughs> Buddy Carl, you go, hey, Bob, remember those songs? I remember. I was Buddy's associate, and I'd go in his office, Chuck, you've been in there. And Buddy would have some, and I said, Buddy, I got out of that stuff, man. I don't want to put that back in me again. Tim Green said he went in there, and he said, Buddy Cargill, you was backslidden as a hound dog. But God gave you some new amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Isn't that a blessing? My wife says, have him sing this, have him sing that. One of these days, you're going to get up and ask him to sing it yourself. A shouting spirit, a joyful spirit. You know, it's hard to make a noise without shouting. I said it's hard to make a noise without Make a joyful noise. That wasn't a noise. I can tell you what a noise is. 
like I said, you can't get around Alan Ryman for 20 minutes that he ain't shouting about something. Amen. I remember, uh, and I've told you about this down at Don Kreider's, where <laughs> Alan Ryman did some, he said, is he crazy? No, he's just saved. Alan Ryman stands back, and it's just like building up steam in a, in a steam motor chuck. And then all of a sudden, he explodes. Glory to God! Well, if you've been come out of what Alan Ryman come out, you'd understand why. His brother in prison for life. He's in prison for life. His whole family is going to hell in a handbasket. And one day, God reached down and saved Alan Ryman. He never got over it. I wonder if some Christians have gotten over it. Well, I, I really, I, I came here thinking that you were going to give me some great doctrinal, you know, message. It is doctrinal. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Even praise. It's hard to praise without opening your mouth. It's hard to praise. Every once in a while you see that little hand reach up. Woohoo! Woohoo! Do you realize what Jesus Christ did for you? A shouting spirit. Psalms 40, verse 1 through 3 tells us what he did for us, a new song he put in our mouth. Can I say, if you look in verse 2, a serving spirit? Find something to do for God. Find something nobody else wants to do in, in the church. Somebody won't do anything. Just find something to do. Why are you smiling at me? <laughs> find something. Say, what can I do? Go up and ask Shirley, can I take the trash out for you? Hey, Amen. You don't care, do you, Shirley? You don't let anybody want to carry trash? You will, right? In fact, you'll fill the basket up for them, right? All right. Hey, Amen. L- listen, it, <laughs> do you know how far the Lord had to go for you? Think about it. Chuck, am I right? Did he take your health for you? Say, you mean I can't go? You couldn't go to hell if you're saved if you wanted to. Am I wrong? He went to hell, dropped off your sin, past, present, and future, and took your hell for you. Why? Because he served you. I must be about my father's business. Did people try to stop him? His disciples tried to deter him, but he said, no, no. I got a job to do, and I got to pay it in full. I've done the work I've come to do. You know what he came to do? To die for mankind, that in him you might have life. And I'm glad, Isaac, for the life he gave me. Never be afraid to open your mouth for him. He's worthy. Doesn't matter what anybody says. The world will mock you because they don't know. The world will mock you because they're jealous. The world, they're not man enough or woman enough to stand up and say, I need a Savior. But he took your place. That you might have life and might have it more abundant. What a blessing that is. Bring a serving spirit, a shouting spirit. Amen. And then bring a singing spirit. As I said, you don't want Buddy Cargill to sing in a choir. Uh, you say, well, he's in glory. He'll have a new voice. I hope it's better than the one he had here. Amen. He couldn't carry a tune in a in a I mean, the smoots are a blessing, but you, I think he would mess your choir up. I'm telling you, that boy, Chuck and I, I'd stood next to Buddy, and Chuck Buddy would sing. And I, I'm not kidding you. If I'm relying on, I'm, you, I'm, oh, oh, I said, Buddy, please, you're deterring people because they said a joyful noise. You act like you killed the cat. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. But he was a great preacher. He's a good brother. Loved God. But he could not sing. And I'm not saying I can. But 
a singing spirit. We're told to approach the Lord God with singing in our heart, ringing, crying, shouting for joy. Bible Baptist, we took the choir we had back then down to Bible Baptist. I didn't do it to show off or anything. Dr. Ruckman asked me, will you bring the choir down? So I asked them, and they said, yeah, we'd like to go, and we made it work out and sung down there at a blowout. Were you not down there then, were you? One of them. Those people, if you, all you got to do is go on YouTube, look under Bible Baptist, back in whatever year it was, and you'll see those people literally, literally, for five minutes at least, people running and jumping and shouting. You say, that's just ungodly. What do you think heaven's going to be like? First time you see him, Sister Julie. What's it going to be like, Brother Robert, first time you look upon him? You look at the one that died for you. You look at the one that knew everything there was to know about you and still saved you anyway. The one who didn't deserve to die said he had took, his, took our sin. I love the verse over there where it says, God the Father, that he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. What, what was the purpose of that? That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Think about what you deserved, what he took, and what he gave back in return. He gave you a life, a more abundant life. Well, let me say number two, bring the right submission. Bring the right submission. Submit to the person of God. We are told to know that the Lord is God. Submit to the purpose of God. That's the things God would have you to do. Friend, you, do, you have to submit to the place that God wants you to be and the thing he wants you to do. God has a purpose for every person sitting here tonight. He's got a purpose for you. It's not for you. Well, the Lord hadn't shown me. Have you asked him? Somebody said we've, we've been sealed in and shut up with the pandemic. We need to open Sunday school classes back up. We need to start doing the things that we did before. You say, well, what are you going for people? God will send them. But we need to do the things we're supposed to do. Bring the a right to me. Lord, I submit to do whatever. Uh, well, what about the nursery? We need people to submit to it. Amen. Why? So people can have a place for the children to go so they can come peacefully listen uh, to the messages or whatever, be taught. Submit to the purpose of God. Submit to the promise of God. You know what? David had his call, uh, had this nailed down in his life in Psalms 23. Look at Psalms chapter 23 and look at verse 1 to 6. I want to show you something. David had this thing nailed down. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Isn't that a blessing? You say, what are you saying, preacher? Submit to the Lord person. Know ye not, he is God. Submit to the purpose of God. When you look at it, what God, what is it you have for me to do? You realize God has a purpose for each and every one of you? You need to submit to that. Say, I don't know what it is. All right, Lord, whatever you have for me, I want to submit to it. 
It's up to you to show me. It's up to you to put me in that position. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'm sure God the Father, and you look at Genesis 22, and you look at the thing with um, Abraham and Isaac, which is a type of what's going on. You know what Abraham did? He submitted to giving up a son to be sacrificed for somebody else. You know what God the Father did? He submitted to giving up his son, his only son. Submit, Lord, I, I'm ready to do what you want me to do. I'm, I'm not going to have a rebellious spirit. I'm not going to bow up. I'm going to come in and lay down and do what you would have me to do. But there's some things you can bring to church, and not your pocketbook, your songbook, and the hymnal book. David had this thing nailed down in his life. You ever grasp the truth that the Lord is your shepherd? You know what a shepherd does? You know what the job of a shepherd is? It's a, it's a, I think one priority is protection. But the other, other thing is provision. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The other part of it is guidance. You'll have them in a place where they're comfort and protected and provided for. Too often we worry about how is God going to do something rather than submitting to the point of doing it. It's not your job to figure out how God's doing it, how he wants to do it. Lord, I submit. Whatever it you have, whatever you want me to do, however way you want to do it. Not to bring the story back, many years ago, your husband called me, and he said, I'm resigning my church. That's been a long time ago. And he said to me, God wants me to go to the Philippines. I'm not bringing out bad stuff. But he said, pray for my wife that she'd submit to it. And Miss Vicki did. How many years were you there? Ten? Eight years? You say, well, what, what's that have to do with anything? How many radio stations are over there today? Two? Reaching? Now listen. Just all you have to do is submit to what God says. Reaching how many people on a daily basis? Over two million people a day. Brother Hunter went over and he said, I feel like the Lord might want me to start a church. And then, long story short, you've heard it before where this guy came up and said, I have a radio station. He had to come back. I can't remember the guy's name. But uh, he said, I have a radio station. He, he actually wrote me back then. I don't think he called me. I think he might have texted me. And he said, this is going on. What do you think? And the thought I had right then and there, in a local church, you might reach in a period of time, let's say 1,000, 2,000 Let's go 5,000 people in a period of time, maybe 10,000 on a radio station. Do you realize how many people you can reach in a day? And I'm probably shorting it by saying 2 million a day. It's probably more 3, 4, 5 million people a day with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God will provide. All you have to do is submit to it. God gives you what, you what you need to do the job he asked you to accomplish. Always does. Just come in with it, not how can we do it, but we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. A submit to the purpose of God. Submit to the promise of God. We are his sheep in his pasture. David has a nail down in his life in Psalms 23, as I just told you. Can I say number three, bring the right sacrifice. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7, thank God that we do have to offer the blood of sacrifices on anything. But Hebrews chapter 10, notice the emphasis on once. Look at it. I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter 10, very quickly, and we'll be done. Um, I didn't want to try to keep you too late tonight, but the deal of it is, brethren, 
there's some things you can bring into church. The singing is a blessing. Bring a good shout, but bring a good servant's heart. And bring a sacrifice of praise to him. I don't know what all that shouting's about. You know heaven <laughs> is a noisy place. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse, um, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Look at it. Once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, you know who he's talking about? You know who that man is? That's Jesus Christ. This man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. I'm S-A-V-E-D. You can't take it away from me if you want it to. Well, I got God's word on it. Amen. You King James Bible, right? I mean, I'm, I, I do have the right Bible, right? <laughs> I know I got the right one. But this man, off of sacrifice for sins once uh, forever, set down at the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies to be made a footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, that ought to make you want to jump, shout, spit, and say glory to God. Amen. You know what people are saying today? You can go into the churches today, and I, every once in a while, I try to catch news in the morning, or I look at something there, and all, you ever heard these prosperity people, Chuck? You ever heard them? They don't never talk about anything but money. I... I if I got to beat and browbeat you out of the money, I'm, I'm going to give you a piece of advice, spiritual. Keep it, put it in your pocket, go buy you a pack of bubble gum. Amen. Because you're not going to get anything for it. God so loved the world, guess what he did? He reached down and found the best he had and said, here. I, I, I think Billy looked it up one time. I preached one time in seven years on giving. I'm not going to waste my time trying to browbeat God's people or tell you God's going to kill you if you don't give. But look what he did for you in light of that. Church runs off of money. Steve said, Pastor, every once in a while it wouldn't hurt. I said, no, I'm not going to browbeat. We've been in this building, how many years, Chuck? 15, 16, 17, something like that. Seven years and one time I preached on giving. I'm not going to do it until God tells me to do it again. But bills are paid by the grace of God. We got a roof over our head, a nice building to be in. We got a few dollars in the bank. And look on the board back. I want you to turn your head back here. I want you to see something. See where Jared's sitting and waving at Miss Elise? You ought to laugh at her a little bit. That won't hurt. See those papers on that board? Those are missionaries. By the grace of God, he's allowed us to help on a monthly basis to propagate the God. Do you realize that little bit of money is going around the world winning people to Jesus Christ? I'm not going to stand here and be like they are on the radio channels, beating you up over money. You know what? God will bless what you do if you give it with the right heart and do it in the right place to put it where it needs to be. We are to enter into his gates with what? Not with crying, not with moaning, but with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. You ever just get up in the morning? I'm done. Get up in the morning and go, thank you, Lord, I woke up. Thank you, Lord, I was able to stand up. Thank you, Lord, I was able to get up. Now help me, Lord, as I go to tell someone about how you Bless my life today. Because there's a lot of people. Brother Jarrett can't get out of the bed. There's a lot of people that are hurting today. There's young people younger than me that are in the grave.
There's people that have gone through battles of cancer. But God has blessed my life so greatly. And say, because what you get, no, had nothing to do with it. Because I've never gotten over how good God has been to an old wretch like me. When I let him down, Joseph, an old man like me, I get down on the floor and say, God, you've been so good to me. Forgive me, I'll let you down. Help me to glorify you in my walk today. Help me to carry you wherever I go. I don't want to ever say I'm too busy to pray. I don't know how busy you can get when you don't pray. You have trouble in your hands. But I will look at the Lord and say, God is great. His name should be lifted up. How great is my God. I want to come to him with thanksgiving, with praise in my mouth, with expectancy. Come expecting God to do something in your midst, to give you the answers to the problems and the prayers that you've been seeking, to give you help where you need it, to help you. God gave you, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Listen, you ever went in there and allowed the Spirit of God, Lord, I need some direction. I need you to give me guidance. I, I need you to show me what to do. God's obligated to help you, and he will. All you have to do is go in with a, thank, a praise and thanksgiving. I remember, and I've told you this before, I remember a lady getting really upset, Brother Chuck, with, with Rex Harrison. And she said, I bless God, I, I don't think I'm ever coming back to this. This guy was an evangelist, and he was as rough as a porcupine's back. And Rex... Rex got under her skin on something. And Rex says, oh, I know what it was. He says, men ought to always pray and not to faint. In other words, you ought to be praying, praying when you're up, praying when you go to lay down, pray uh, when, you, when you have nothing else, pray while you're driving, pray when you do. And she didn't like it one bit. She says, bless God, I do the best I can. Apparently, I said, somebody got in your shed. I don't know what the deal is, lady. But somebody done turned over a cover on you. You and exposed you. And she says, well, I do everything I can do. And I said, ma'am, nobody's suggesting you're not. Well, what's, what's curling your feathers up so bad? I pray. And I said, ma'am, do you pray when you, when you should or when you get time? And she says, well, I have to go to work, and it's a 45-minute drive to work and a 45-minute drive back. And I said, it is. And what do you do in those 45 minutes? Do you realize that's an hour? No, was it two hours and what, an hour and 15 minutes, whatever, hour and 30 minutes, an hour and a half, 90 minutes of driving? What do you do then? Well, I listen to the news and the radio and the songs. I said, you ever stop to think, turn that radio off? And you have a promise from God, call on me and I will hear you. Have you ever just said, Hey, Lord, how about you and I having a talk? Have you ever done that? No. I said, try it. Her bitterness went away. She realized that God put that in that man's mouth because she could have been praying when she wasn't praying. You know what praying will do? It will reveal something from God to you It'll channel out and reach the people that you're trying to minister. It'll do some lot of things. And that lady turned around later on down the road and said, okay. But the Lord convicted me because I had a 40-minute drive, went both ways, and he said, well, what about you, big preacher? So I cut off my radio and quit listening to the news and started praying. I'm just trying to tell you, there's some things you can bring to church. There's many other things, praise that you can bring to church. But more often than not, we like to bring the problems to church. And that's not a place to bring them. What you need to do is step out from there. When you walk in here, say, Lord, I, I need something from you. When you get to feeling down, Lord, but make me realize I have nothing to feel bad about. If I die tomorrow, the absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. There's no problem, no problem so big that your God can't handle it. 
You say, I don't know. Did he handle the sin problem? Did he not die for your sins? You have eternal, eternal security. You are eternally saved because of your faith and trust. Now watch, you ain't trusting in you, you're trusting in him. Remember that verse over in Corinthians, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, purpose that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If you're saved, what are you something else? I have the privilege, Miss Julia, of be calling a child of the king, join heir with the father. I got it all. I'm happy to say I want to bring some things when I come to the church. I want to bring a good spirit. I want to bring a shouting spirit. I don't want to come in and bum people out. I want to say what a blessing it is. I have a place to get away from. Walk out of the nasty now and now and come in here and get something from God. I know Psalms 105 is millennial. But boy, what a thing it is to realize we have a God who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Somebody said, well, what I can think. No, above what you can think. And could we throw the little ask thing in there too? You can't out ask God anything that he can't perform. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you for the patience of these folks tonight. Pray that you'll bless the effort that was put out. Lord, I know it wasn't much, but Lord, as you read in Psalms 105, Lord, the, the things that you've done, and um, I'm so tickled by it. Lord, I see every once in a while these people, uh, uh, my wife and I are looking at these people that won millions of dollars, and they walk with a big smile, and, you know, I've, you know, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Let me tell you who's rich. Those who are in you are rich. Those that have trusted your son and what he died for and taken away our sin. Lord, uh, I'm going to a place where the Bible tells me there's streets of gold. Amen. I'm going to a place where it says not gates of pearl, but gate of pearl. I'm going to a place where you live, where you abode is, where I can never have to see sorrow, sadness, sickness, or say goodbye. Help us, Lord, to walk around with the attitude of gratitude. Bring the right things to church, the right spirit, the right speech, the right songs, that you might be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you tonight.